let's talk a little bit about Star Investment Partners' philosophy and the different products and services. So at the top level, we break our product offering or our service offering into three key areas. One is model portfolios. These are portfolios which we construct with a particular uh, outcome in mind. Typically, uh, inflation plus returns is what uh, uh, most financial advisors are looking for. They align their financial uh, uh, planning service to the underlying portfolios. And typically, financial advisors use inflation as a base case for real returns. The second uh, category is collective investment schemes, locally known as unit trusts, offshore known as mutual funds. The collective investment schemes are effectively pooled vehicles for uh, uh, investors. And the third category is bespoke portfolios. Bespoke or segregated mandates are ones where only one investor is participating in the benefits of that portfolio, unlike model portfolios, which can be spread across many investors or collective investment schemes by their very nature have multiple investments. So if we were to start at, at the premise of the model portfolios, and this does stretch into collective investment schemes as well, we're trying to solve for three things. Right? One, we're trying to solve for an investor who could walk into his bank all right, and get a bank deposit rate, but he's looking for more than that. So he has to turn to another institution, whether it's a financial advisor or an investment manager, to try and achieve that return which is better than cash in the bank. So that's what we're trying to, to, to solve for first. Second, we're trying to solve for getting the return in the most reliable manner. So if they have a target of a return of say CPI plus two or inflation plus two, inflation plus four, how do we most reliably achieve that for the end consumer? And we can do this, as I say, in model portfolios and in collective investment schemes as well as bespoke. The most important thing that we don't want to do, or the most important thing that we do want to do, is we want to manage the downside risk, which is the third element. So very few consumers, in my experience, and I've been doing it for 30 plus years, very few consumers are worried about the upside. They're all worried about the downside. That's what drives their behavior. Their behavior is driven by this fear of loss, far greater the fear of loss than the elation of excess returns. In fact, some studies have been done to show that there's at least twice as much fear of loss as there is elation of excess. So we are managing the downside fundamentally in the portfolios. Now this is again, not unique. Most people are trying to do this. We just go about it very differently. So if you take the base case as being a cash deposit, which a consumer can take, he doesn't need a financial advisor to do that. He might uh, need one to decide which bank to go to and what length of deposit, but he doesn't need them to walk in the bank. Right? If you take that as the base case, we believe all portfolios should be constructed with that base case in mind. What can the consumer do without my assistance? And so we take cash as the base case and we build from there. Once we've established that a, a, a cash rate is positive, in other words, real positive above inflation, right? we then look to extract as much of that positive real return without taking too much duration risk. Now this takes a little, it's a little bit more complicated and I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting to belittle the complexity I just want to make it reasonably easy to understand at the, at the, at the first draft. But if essentially you have a spectrum from one day deposit up to 30, 40, 50 year uh, 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 fixed income investments. The problem with the 40 and 50 uh, uh, year investments are that they tend to be much more volatile in nature. In other words, they, the price of that investment moves up and down much more than, and almost similar, if not sometimes worse than equities. And people don't realize that. So you don't want to take on enormous amounts of duration risk. That's the length of the, uh, the investment, uh, simply to get excess returns. So we essentially focus on the shorter end of the investment spectrum uh, in, in fixed uh, deposits and fixed income nature. And we build our, our portfolios from there. What we're able to do with that is instead of getting inflation plus two, which is in fact, almost the norm in South Africa with cash deposits, 
we have something in South Africa which is not unique, but is unique in our environment in that um, it is essentially real interest rates have existed in South Africa for since the 1950s. And what real interest rates mean is your cash deposit is going to beat inflation. And we believe that we can extract greater than that in the, in the fixed income markets short duration by about another 2%, one and a half to 2%. Essentially what that means is from a cash plus type return, we can achieve inflation plus two to 3% quite comfortably. It's when you need to achieve more. And unfortunately in South Africa, more is always better. Actually it's true all over the world. So for people who have got time on their hands, they do want to achieve more than inflation plus 3%. To do that, Reliably and successfully, you need two things. One is you need different asset classes that can achieve those returns over time. And two, you need time to let those assets grow. And those are the two things that, that, that we, we take into account when selecting our growth assets. To cut a very long story short, we, re, we resolved that the best form of long-term capital growth that you can invest into in a pooled investment with daily liquidity is equities or shares. That's both in South Africa and globally. There are other asset classes we did consider. Obviously, property is a very well-known asset class, but it has got less reliability and it performs differently and, and with less consistency than we would like. So we've chosen equity as our, our main growth asset. What differentiates us slightly from our peers I say slightly, it's actually quite fundamental, is that we don't believe you need to be exposed to risk assets from day one of your investment. You can accumulate your risk assets over a period of time and get virtually the same result return-wise with much lower levels of volatility. And if you recall what I said about consumers and how they react to their money, volatility on the downside is what we're trying to, to, to manage for here. We want to take out the amount of downside risk you've got in your risk assets and still give you the upside. So we, what we do is we average in to risk assets. So we take all the returns that we're making on the fixed income side of our portfolio and we average into our model portfolios and our CIS portfolios those returns. And you would think this makes some sense but the vast majority of our peers don't follow this model. They follow a traditional diversification model where you start with X amount in cash, X amount in uh, bonds, X amount in property, uh, and X amount in, in um, uh, equity, and you just ride it out. You ride it through the cycle. The problem with that is that most consumers can't ride that ride comfortably, and that's what we're trying to uh, assist them with. And in fact, most financial advisors find it very difficult to ride that comfortably. So again, we're assisting them. You can see where we're going with this. Effectively, we're looking at the financial advisor and the consumer before we're looking at ourselves and saying, you know, do it the traditional way, diversification works. Well, we believe it works, but we, we, we believe it works better the way we do it than our peers. And that's not to belittle our peers. We think our peers have done incredibly well in managing money over long periods of time. It's the journey which is the difficult part.